Most modern Christian evangelism methods are not actually evangelism methods. They are recruiting methods. And evangelism and recruiting are not the same thing. True evangelism brings people into a relationship with God. And every relationship is unique, just as every marriage is unique. Jesus looks different in everyone. And true evangelism, through the Spirit of God, equips and liberates people from all forms of control and bondage, rising up to unity in the faith, resulting in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's according to Paul when he says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. But does that sound like what we think of when we hear the word evangelism? In the modern world, evangelism is often actually recruiting into our particular belief system are the values of our particular organization's leader, not the freedom of Jesus. And most people, unwittingly, when they are trained to evangelize, are actually trained to recruit people into a costs, works, performance, fear relationship instead of how to lead others into an intimate relationship with Jesus as the bridegroom. They're trained to ask questions like, since Jesus gave everything for you, what are you willing to give to Jesus? Or, if you knew you were going to die tonight, would you go to heaven or hell? That's motivating people to move from guilt or fear, and that brings people into bondage, often to validate the evangelist or the organization we're part of. We pat ourselves on the back and gauge success by things like, Oh, look at how many people raise their hand to accept Jesus. I've checked that box. We've prayer walked and spoke to people in this area of the map. We've evangelized. Check mark. Look how much our membership, and thus our tithe, will now increase. Check that box. Look at how much our attendance is going up because of our evangelism. Check the box. Look how many we've brought into heaven by saying a magic prayer that's not in the Bible. Check the box. But here's the issue with that kind of thinking. If the message you are hearing or preaching doesn't lift people's burdens, release people from bondage, and directly and intimately connect people to their true source of life, then is it the actual good news? No, it's not. When people are motivated from guilt or fear, it may help in the immediate, but long term, it does not. Look at the current state of affairs. You cannot apply a negative action and get a long-term positive result. You can't plant rotten seeds of guilt, shame, and fear to begin a relationship and not expect to reap rotten fruit. And if it's not the gospel, the good news of relationship and true love with Christ, what does it accomplish other than bitterness, fear, manipulation? I mean, have you checked on social media to see where a lot of Christians move from? While that might be frightening, look through the eyes of compassion and imagine how those people actually came to the faith. It's kind of sad. Any message that's not the real good news from God will be harmful. What will happen under such a message is that people will be hurt over and over and harmed again and again. And often improper evangelism leads us to improper leadership. And here's where that goes south. In scripture, we're given instructions to obey, follow, and submit to spiritual leaders. Hebrew 13 says, obey your leaders and submit to them for they keep watch over your souls as those who give an account. But if you're brought into the faith through shame and fear and other tricks of manipulation, then you're often brought into an abusive system of shame and fear. And Hebrews 13 is actually stripped of its spirit and translated legalistically to mean don't think, don't discern, don't question, and don't notice any problems. Because if you do, you're going to be labeled as unsubmissive, unspiritual, and divisive. And then whoosh, you're excommunicated from the group or you're put over there in the corner. And nobody puts baby in the corner. But I want to tell you right now, this has been your experience. If you're carrying the ragged scars of spiritual abuse, just know that is not Jesus. And that is not the real church. Believers united through their love of Christ. You don't have to settle. No church is perfect. 
but there are good churches. There are good people. I know quite a few of them who will love you and see the Jesus uniquely in you. Don't give up. Keep searching because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And that includes freedom from spiritually abusive relationships, improper recruiting, and submission to authorities that don't have you and Jesus's best interests in mind. Don't give up. Love is out there. God bless. See you soon.